most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we have the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of Yahoo. course, Bob. Okay, Brad, you wanted to talk today about how, when, it, when is somebody ready to go back to a sport after an injury? Right, we've been getting a lot of comments from viewers, and they asked me that question, and this is going to be a really nice way, say you injured your ankle, your knee, or your hip, if that leg is ready to go back, so you just don't go out there arbitrarily and end up hurting yourself again, right. going back uh, to You're going to want to have a therapist or somebody, you know, do this testing on you, but this is what we often do to right. determine yeah. whether or not you're Th ready to This go is back. a pretty scientific way to do it, yeah. in, as far as without getting some computer isokinetic equipment. Right. right. And you can come up with some nice numbers, and when I do this, I come up with percentages right compared to left, and I send that information to the doctor oftentimes, and doctors really like to have some good, solid information like this. Generally, Brad, like, let's say it's a knee issue. We're not going to want you to go back to the sport until, the, you know, the strength of that knee is about 90% of what the other knee is. Exactly. And that the pain is gone, swelling is gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, just general things like that. Right. Yeah. You're not going to injure your ankle a week later because now you can walk on it and right. do this test. Right. <laughs> it, exactly. It, it doesn't work that way. There's some progression. Uh, for example, an ACL surgery is usually four months afterwards, give or take a few weeks. Before you're going to look at doing something exactly. like this. Exactly. So. Probably a month after an ankle injury. And by the way, Brad, if you haven't already, I know many of you are new to our channel. Uh, please take just a second, please, please, and yeah. hit the subscribe button. It's right on the screen here because uh, we provide you lots of videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day, seven days a week, Brad. Exactly. All right. Say no more, Bob. All right. All right. So let's, uh, let's, let's say we've got an ankle injury here. Okay. Like I said, it could be ankle, knee, hip, uh, whatever. One leg has got a problem. Uh, but at this point, it's feeling pretty good. The swelling, like you said, is, is gone to none. You can walk without any problems. And you even tried the jog a little bit, and it's feeling pretty good. Okay. But you want to get out and play soccer, say. Yeah, the, the stresses are a lot higher <laughs> than just <laughs> yeah. walking and running. Exactly. I'm, Ten times the amount of impact when you're running versus walking is some of the sure. information I've heard. It's, it's tremendous, particularly when you're in cleats and you're going to put extra stress on that ankle. Right. All right. So what do we do after all those criteria are met? This is the first thing. First of all, don't wear this kind of clothing. Get rid of the tie. Come in with some shorts on, a t-shirt on. Cause the shoes really match the outfit, by the yeah, way. Yeah, they do, actually, don't they, Bob? Uh, right. But you need to be ready because you're probably going to perspire a little bit. I okay. always get a kick out of this when people have to come and then they go to school right afterwards. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, they don't like it because they're a little, you know, they hope they had got their deodorant. The first thing we're going to do is go 15 seconds. All right, like, I got it on the, on the clock yeah, here. Yeah, these uh, smartphones can really be smart. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have... Lonnie, zoom in on this later, but this is where we're going to collect their information. We'll okay. go through that in a little bit. Sounds good. First, let's go through the mechanics. 15-second timer. All right. Okay. Tell me when we'll start. Just wait, Bob. Don't, don't rush. I'm going to go both feet. Okay. Equal weight on both feet, and we're just going to hop. And when Bob says go, I'm going to count how many times I hop. Are you ready, Bob? Yep. Go. Ten, nine, eight, seven. I can't count when you're doing that, Bob. <laughs> it's a long 15 seconds. Isn't that a yep. cute timer? Okay. Um, you gotta hit that top one. Oh, dismiss. Okay. There you go. Okay. So you count how many times you do it. Now, typically, someone in high school. Usually be around 35 jumps on this particular test I found. This kind of an average. Could be a little more, a little less. Zero pain with that. Everything felt good. This is the next step. I like to have a line on the floor like now this. Now you do jump, jump with both legs, Brad, or one single leg? We're all? doing both legs. This okay. is just a precursor to the single leg. Okay. So That's when good. we get the meat of the progress. But we got to make sure we're prepared for this. You don't have the time again, Bob. Okay. But the therapist or someone would say, go. And I'm going to do the same thing, both feet for 15 seconds. Going over the line. Over the line, forward and backwards. It stresses the ligaments, the muscles, the legs, everything in a little different manner. Okay. If that's pain-free, you're not done yet. You still have to go right to left. This is a lot more stressful. Okay. Here's the line. I like to call it the slalom, but call it whatever you want. Right and left, basically. Yeah. If you got an ankle strain, this is going to stress it a little bit more. 
So are you counting on these number of times? You don't have to. Because you're just you're trying to determine if you're ready for the next exactly. one. Exactly. Right? Good so point. So even on Bob. the first one, you didn't really need to count, did you? No. Uh -huh. I kind of like to just because it gives me an idea. I, I know that usually people are on 30 to 35. You know, it, it just kind of gives me a rough idea. Sure. But I'm more interested to say, is there any pain with that activity? That should be zero pain with all of those. Then you can progress to the real test. Right, because the, the, this is stressful, but the next stress, the next one is so much more stressful. Right. You, you, you got to be able to tolerate this. Exactly. We don't jump right into it. Right. No, no pun <laughs> on words. All right. So, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Now, my right leg is the, the injured. Prob the problem child. Exactly. So we're actually going to mark that with a little red tape. Okay. That's the one you always test second. That's the second okay. one you test. So it's just simply we're going to do up and down. I'm not okay. going to go a full second, 15 seconds. Yeah, we'll, we'll just. I'll, I'll start it. But. Yeah. So I'll start bouncing. And you just do a regular hop. Good mechanics. As a therapist, I'm looking to see if, how the person, if they're, they have any compensations and, and kind of doing this kind of thing. Make sure they have good balance. We just says time, we count, say we get, well, let's say we did it right here. Okay, that's uh, that was my left leg on involved. I did 35. That's normal. Okay, now I'm going to go to my right one. This is the injured one. Hmm. And then all of a sudden you see you're just hopping up and down. Yep. And sometimes this will happen because you might be experiencing a little pain. 15 seconds. 17 of them. Oh, the pain went up a little bit. Not a okay. lot. One over 10. At one over 10. I'll continue to progress. So the first number is how many times you did it? Right. And the second number is how, what your pain is at? Right. They're right next to each other. So I did 17 times pain, 1 over 10. On the right leg, that's the one that has the involved one. Left one, you did 35 times. Zero, zero out of 10. Exactly. Okay. Now I have to repeat the whole thing again for forward and backwards. OK. OK. So forward and backwards. The the leg that has no problems, we're going to count that. We're going to count it right and left and up and down. I did that backwards. You always start with up and down first. Then I, I like to go forward and backwards second, right to left. These always. are all done separately though, right, Brad? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So. You do 15 seconds up and down. Up and down. 15. Count it. Write it down. Oh. Okay. Then you do 15 seconds forward and backwards. Count it in 15 seconds. Write it down, right. and then right to, to left, left, count it, write it, write down. it down. And so, the pain levels on each one. Right. So, so why don't you go through this, Brad? Yep. Can, can you zoom in on this, Lonnie? Or should we come closer to you? Just a little bit. We'll come. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this. Yep. Yeah, let's do this. Good. All right. So here's my chart. This is the right leg. This is the left leg. This is up and down, forward and backwards, or to and fro, and then right to left. On the right leg, or I did the left one first because that's the uninvolved, the pain-free one. I did 35 up and down, zero pain. Forward and backwards, 34, zero pain. Right to left, 32, zero pain, exactly what you expect. Then you go to the involved one, or the painful one. I got involved here, okay? And you can tell it's involved. Only 17 up and down jumps. Pain wasn't too bad. One over 10. You know, I may continue then. Two forward and backwards. Pain was a little more. Only one down, went down to 16. And you can see the big difference. Over half, less yeah. than half of the involved. On the other side. And then right to left. This is the one that is almost always the most challenging. Uh, the pain went up to four over 10. Only did eight hops and very clear. So how do we get this information to find out if we're at that 90%, Bob? Right. Uh, this is a little, I don't know if it's complicated, but you've got to think about it a little bit. You're going to add these numbers or divide this number by this number. So 17 divided by 35 is going to give you 0.49 something something. Right. Multiply Move it by 100. You multiply by 100 and 49% up and down. Do the division again here to here. You come up with 47% and right to left. It's 25%. Yeah, those aren't good numbers. No, th yeah. this person is not ready to go back. If you want to get a little more thorough with it, you can add these three up. 
divide them by three, and the overall percentage is 40%. Sure. This person needs a lot more strengthening, a lot more work before they go back, back to their sport. All right, you wanna show the jump test then, Brad? Actually, you... Bob, I'm kinda of tired. Okay. Let's, wait, let's save that one for another video, because I, I think there's only so much a person can digest. Sure, that sounds good. Yeah, this is, a, this is an important test. And you might have to watch this a couple of times and get this down if you really want to, but really a therapist. That was the hop test. Right. And, um, in the future, we'll do the jump test. Right. Okay. Which is another high stress, and it depends on your activity. If you're a long jumper, you definitely want to do the jump test. Right. <laughs> yeah, or even a basketball player. A basketball yeah. player. We could go on. We could think of football would be another sure. one, whether it's football or soccer, because there's a lot, you know, we always wonder, what is football? Because football is soccer, and soccer is football. And, of course, bowling. All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. <laughs>